Thanks once again for joining us for the City of Maple Grove Report. I'm Dave Kaiser from CCX Media. Thanks for being with us along with Heidi Nelson, Maple Grove City Administrator. Welcome once again. Thank you. We have a long meeting to talk about. It was on the 6th of September because of the holiday, about a three hour meeting. Yeah. So one big topic, but a number of things that you'll want to get updated on. Nothing pulled from the consent agenda on the 6th. So let's get right to some of the main items. And the first was Experience Maple Grove presentation. Give us a little idea of what this group is and what was talked about at the meeting. Yeah, so this is Maple Grove's new destin destination management organization. Um, if folks will recall, the city of Maple Grove used to be a member of the Visit Minneapolis Northwest um, uh, Tourism Bureau. Mm -hmm. We left that organization and kind of established our own um, destination management organization. These types of organizations are funded um, by a 3% lodging tax that's paid in the city. Not a new tax in Maple Grove, but has been paid for many years um, by our hotels and help support marketing um, for the area. Mm -hmm. So um, with our departure in January from Visit Minneapolis Northwest, we started our own organization, Experience Maple Grove. Um, and Gretchen Wilbrandt was recently hired as the new president and CEO of that organization. And so she's um, getting going on the new branding for um, all things Maple Grove. Uh, they've established a hashtag of um, hashtag my Maple Grove. So as people are nice. out and about and can tag that in their photos and social media. Um, can start to kind of help tell the story. But uh, this organization is going to be very active in um, helping to bring, uh, you know, events and tournaments and those types of things to Maple Grove and then promoting, um, you know, all the, the things that Maple Grove has to offer, all of our great parks and recreation system, parks and trails, retail, shopping, um, you know, hotels, sports facilities, all those types of things. So mm -hmm. good to get an update there and you're going to yeah. start to see more of that branding out in the community. All right, watch for it and get that hashtag going. Next item on the agenda from the 6th were some liquor license violations. This was from activity that took place in late July mm -hmm. and there were five to report on. Tell us a little bit more about this. Yeah, so our police department was out um, at the end of July to do compliance checks with all of our liquor license holders and we had five uh, failures this time. It's always a little disappointing with our um, liquor license holders, but uh, we moved through that process last night uh, as part of the council agenda. Um, failures on the part of Benny Hanna, Ch uh, Grill Hall, uh, Grill Hall Churrascaria, TGI Fridays, Angels Liquor, and Sam's Club. So the council um, worked, worked through kind of the penalty phase of each of those violations. Um, TGI Fridays is is asking to challenge um, their their fail, failure on that, and so that'll come back at a later date. But um, I think just the council wanting to reinforce the importance of you know not selling to minors, and mm -hmm. you know for some of these it was the second violation in a three-year period, which sort of increases the penalty phase. Um, I think what you know we're very concerned about is what happens when we're not there if you know we're there and with a, a decoy from the police department to um, you know for the sale of alcohol uh, how many times is it happening when we're not there and mm -hmm. so a lot of concern around um, the sale of alcohol to minors and truly how easy it can be to make sure that everyone is carded um, a lot of uh, businesses use scanners now um, mm -hmm. I think especially in the off sale market very easy to do everybody's coming to one you know single place to check out so um, you do see a lot of the businesses now moving to that scanner type um, process for, mm -hmm. for IDs. So um, these will come back to finalize at the next council agenda and then as I mentioned um, we'll be dealing with that that TGI Fridays um, challenge to that um, in the coming weeks. Very good. Next item was the adoption of the preliminary 2023 budget and levy, something we've talked about for quite some time as the process has moved ahead. So mm -hmm. tell us about this next step in the process. Yeah, so we had our, our first budget work session back on August 15th. A lot of good discussion and direction from the council there. Um, um, and a direction about setting that preliminary levy. Of course, this sets the high water mark. We can only go down from here. Mm -hmm. um, but came in with a levy at 4.91% increase and then about a 3.62% increase in the budget. Um, pretty, I think we worked real hard to get those numbers to where they are. Uh, a lot of things at play this year. So just general inflation, pressures on wages. Um, we recently settled some union contracts uh, that had increased costs and then um, just general, you know, utilities, gas, those types of things that are costing, you know, everybody else more, but also the city more. Sure. And so um, lots of good um, 
pieces of this budget, we're adding a fire inspector position to help uh, with those fire inspections in the field of not only industrial buildings, but also apartment structures, adding a par park maintenance worker um, to help care for our growing park system, um, adding uh, an embedded social worker position in the police department. Mm -hmm. This is a position that's partially funded by Hennepin County right. and supported by Hennepin County. Um, what it really helps is uh, kind of as a follow-up and coordination effort with our officers is um, if there's a call where really, you know, it's kind of more of a social work issue or a social service issue, um, there can be follow-up done and, and then tapping into Hennepin County resources um, for those individuals. So mm -hmm. many communities in Hennepin County have added this program and are seeing a great benefit in terms of, you know, kind of redirecting things that really aren't a law enforcement issue mm -hmm. um, and then connecting those folks into services to try to help reduce, you know, kind of those um, repeated calls to 911 um, that might be more appropriately handled elsewhere. So um, good process on the budget. Uh, we really appreciate the work of all the directors and the finance team kind of bringing this in. And so um, we set also our budget hearing, right. our final budget hearing for the year will be on December 5th, and then we'll get um, that budget adopted at the December 19th council meeting. More information about the budget on the city's website. Moving ahead on the meeting from the six. Here is the longest item for you under community and economic development. It was the Rush Hollow planned unit development and this has been talked about before and was tabled in the past. Bring us up to date. Yeah so this is a project that was, had been in front of the Planning Commission in late July uh, and we have been working with the developer since that time and then brought this forward for the council um, consideration last evening. Um, big development. This is up off of um, kind of west of Fernbrook Road north of County Road 81 in and around the Territory Road area mm -hmm. involves a number of transportation elements. So the extension of Maple Grove Parkway um, kind of to the north across the field there to connect up with Fernbrook Park uh, decisions needing to be made in terms of where that park would uh, parks would be located. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in general, just the land use and density decisions that would need to be made. Right. We did go through a master planning process for this area. So um, the developer was kind of tracking along with that. This is a development project that's being led by Pulte. Um, big development, um, 161 acres, 536 housing units. So, mm -hmm. and, and would be, of course, constructed in phases over a number of years right. um, as the market would warrant. But a lot of discussion at the Planning Commission, um, primarily, you know, a lot of the issues were around lot size. Um, this is a development where they are preserving and dedicating to the city a considerable amount of open space. Uh, so that would be an amenity to the development. So kind of in trade for that, you know, what those lot sizes look like uh, and what that development, you know, to make that financially feasible. Mm -hmm. um, another big asset through this area is, you know, Rush Creek runs through that area, and so Three Rivers Park District uh, has the intentions of a trail connection through there. Okay. So we would work, um, you know, collaboratively with Three Rivers Park District on that when that land was dedicated to ensure that they had um, the ability to make those trail connections through there. Mm -hmm. So lots of feedback on. Um, the, the lot sizes, I think most concerned around the, the 50 foot lot sizes. Uh, so the developer was asked to kind of go back to the drawing board a bit and, and come back with some options that might address some of that. I think, um, you know, the develop and also includes some townhomes and a senior cooperative and I mm -hmm. think the council was generally supportive of those elements of it. and. Um, just wants to see some you know some options on those lot sizes so okay. not sure if this one will come back right okay. away here in September we did get an extension from the developer um, through the end of October so we have mm -hmm. a bit here no active you know no construction anticipated on this you know the at this fall so sure. um, this is something that we would be looking at for the spring of 23 so we do have some time here um, to work through these issues with the developer and it did affect the next item in the agenda yes. as well so that was tabled as well correct yeah so associated with their there's this, there's a rezoning and a comp comprehensive plan amendment. Mm -hmm. So all of these are kind of tied together. So that was tabled um, to a future meeting as well. So that was a big item from the meeting. Let's move to some staff reports to get you up to date on what's happening in the city. First in community and economic development planning commission coming up on the 12th. They've got a few items to touch on. Yeah, so um, I'll actually be there on the 12th to do a quick presentation about the community center project and the local option sales tax question mm -hmm. on the ballot. We're out right now talking to a lot of groups, just making sure, sure that voters have the information information they need as they go to the polls later this month. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a, a small development out um, on Bass Lake Road, about four to five lots. It's kind of by the, the water um, storage facility out there. And then um, the Broadway Pizza site will mm -hmm. be experiencing some redevelopment there and probably a, 
uh, a multi-tenant kind of a two bay retail facility there so look to see some activity um, changes to that broadway pizza site speaking of business activity let's tell you about a few new businesses in town there are some openings happening i think one tonight and yeah. all around this time of the year what's happening yeah so earlier today in fact okay. uh, the i saw uh, mayor and councilmember jagger and councilmember phil leith were over at the floor and decor mm -hmm. um, grand opening over there and that's of course in the former theater space right. um, so they've made some improvements to that building kind of demo demoed the inside of that building um, and uh, we're you know celebrating that grand opening today and I know they're open for business now Good. Um, Keller Williams is a new um, real estate office it's located um, down off a of 73rd just south of 694 you might see it by the new um, the renovated billboard location right. down right. there off of 694 um, so they're gonna be celebrating their grand opening next week no items to update on from engineering and public works and last was administrative updates and there is open house coming up on the community center speaking of that mm -hmm. and that is tonight it is tonight. so as we're recording this on the Wednesday and again give us an update on the community center what is the information that's out right now and the great website people can go to yeah so growing together maplegrove.org is our website lots of information there about not only the plan for reinvestment in the community center but also the ballot question that'll be on this November that asks about the local option sales tax to help fund that community center project so mm -hmm. encourage folks to get out to that website um, Tonight at the open house, we're going to be sharing a lot of that information and and um, more detail about kind of the plans and the space planning that's gone on for that facility uh, and the, some benefits of the project. Folks will also have an opportunity to kind of walk around the community center a bit if okay. they haven't Very been in there good. for a yeah. while. So we look forward to that. Um, and then again, um, you know, absentee voting starts September 23rd. So we encourage folks to get out to the website and make sure they're informed as they go to the polls. Speaking of voting, let's talk about some Canada forums so you can meet some of the candidates and hear what they stand for. There are some forums coming up and you mentioned some of them at the meeting. Yeah, so the League of Women Voters up here is going up here in the Northwest Metro, um, hosting um, some candidate forums coming up in the coming weeks. Um, they all start at 6.30 p.m. and they'll be held at the Maple Grove Government Center in mm -hmm. our council chambers and CACX Media here will be covering yep. those and replaying them so they will be available if you're you know not able to attend in right. person. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday, September 13th is Maple Grove Mayor and City Council. Um, the mayor position and two council member seats are on the November 8th ballot. The mayor is running unopposed, mm -hmm. but we do have seven candidates um, on the ballot for the two council seats. So um, that one is on Tuesday, September 13th. Wednesday, September 14th, uh, Senate District 37 and House District 37B. Um, this uh, includes the candidates for the Minnesota State Senate seat and the House of Representatives seat here in District, the new District 37 mm -hmm. from a numbering perspective, a little bit of boundary right. change as well. And then Thursday, September September 22nd, the Osseo School Board for District 279 um, has three school board seats on the ballot and the candidate forum will be held that night as well in Maple Grove. Great. Information on the city's website, also the CCX Media website. After those are done, you'll see them uploaded and able to watch at a later time. Then final note for the meeting, had to adjourn to go to an EDA meeting and something that's done on an annual basis. Yeah, so this is part of our budget process is to kind of set that preliminary levy for our EDA HRA activity. We've held um, our EDA HRA levy at um, 150,000 since 1999. Really helps to support our various housing programs throughout the city. Um, so that was the request for this year and that preliminary levy will be sent on to Hennepin County then. So that wraps up the long, long meeting from September 6th. Next meeting coming up on the 19th. We'll remind you of that in a few minutes. But now let's take a few minutes to go around town and find out some other things that are happening. The fall newsletter is out so people can find a wealth of information there. Yeah, it's available online and should have been in your home recently. Okay. If you're interested in print copies, they're available at the Government Center as well. And you mentioned the election. Again, remind us of those dates. General election in November, but yep. September 23rd, big date to remember. Yeah, so absolutely. Absentee voting starts September 23rd. It'll be here before we know it. We'll be hosting that at the Government Center again this year. Um, we're going to start uh, with absentee voting upstairs in kind of that second floor reception area. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be lots of signage in the Government Center and so folks can head on up um, to absentee vote there. And then as we get closer to the election, we're going to kind of see how activity okay, goes, sure. how business is. <laughs> um, but we'll, prep, we'll be transitioning down to the council chambers, okay. likely the middle of of October we're kind of predicting as mm -hmm. um, activity picks up in absentee voting and then you can absentee vote all the way up to um, 
you know, just before the, the regular election on um, the Tuesday, November 8th. So right. you can vote absentee uh, even okay. up to Monday um, at the government center. And then it, just to re remember or recall the um, seven days before the election, your, your ballot kind of gets fed right into the, the ballot counter. Mm -hmm. Before that, it's kind of more of a um, envelope type process right. that gets sealed up and that kind of thing. So a little bit more process in that time frame, a little bit clean, you know, easier at, yep. the, at the seven days in. So um, our election staff is, is getting ready. Um, and then, of course, we'll be out on election day in those 15 precincts now right. in Maple we'll Grove there, um, sure. conducting our this year's general election. All right, again, go to the website if you want to find out more about the election process and make sure you have the right information. A couple dates for your calendar. Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, an annual event coming up again on Thursday the 29th. Where and who's speaking? Yeah, so Mayor's Prayer Breakfast, general, usually held in May of every year, kind of got pushed to the fall this year. Right. Um, we It's kind of targeted around kind of the National Day of Prayer, which I think President Eisenhower initiative around the National Day of Prayer. So mm -hmm. this year, uh, the event will be held in the fall, September 29th, um, out at Rush Creek Golf Club. Um, this morning event is open to all faiths and interests, so we really encourage everyone to attend. Mm -hmm. The event includes music, a buffet breakfast, um, the keynote speaker this year is Jake Veneta, who's the founder of uh, Breakfast Club, which um, provides ministry to youth yeah. in 10 communities, including right here in Maple Grove. Mm -hmm. um, registration is open for seats and sponsored tables through September 15th. You can visit eventbrite.com to purchase um, tickets uh, for that event. And then next year, we'll look to bring that event back in the spring, but okay. this year on um, Thursday, September 29th at Rush Creek. Yeah, great event for the city. Some other things happening in town. Let's go outdoors and talk about watering, first of all. Mm -hmm. Grass is looking greener, it but is. you're still wanting people to take care of the water. Yeah, and <laughs> this week, particular, it's gotten a little drier. Yes. We've had, you know, right. things are looking good, but it's going to be dry again pretty soon. So just a reminder that we have an ongoing watering restriction in the city of Maple Grove um, for no watering between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. and then um, following that even odd schedule on all other times. Next look outside is Central Park, and let's talk a little bit about the trees there yeah. and some work the city is looking to do and try to improve the trees in that area. Yeah, so this is a great kind of a collaborative project between the Maple Grove Rotary Club and the Maple Grove Lions Club to do um, additional tree planting and replacement mm -hmm. out at Central Park. We've had quite a bit of issues with um, dead or dying trees at Central Park, and so they're going to be doing some work um, not only to plant new trees, but also address kind of some soil and um, those types of issues while okay. they're out there. So looking uh, to uh, plant these trees on September 9th and 10th, uh, as I mentioned with the Rotary and Lions, Cl Lions Clubs actually being out there, not only helping with fund it, but also oh, providing um, that, that labor for the event. Mm -hmm. The plan is to replace 40 to 50 trees in this first phase with an additional replacement of 40 trees either later this fall or next spring. So great uh, project, kind of collaborative in the community and, and bringing those groups together in service. Yeah, hats off to those clubs for helping out with that. Another outside event is the farmer's market rolls on. When is the next chance to get some fresh produce? Yeah, so September, great time um, to get out and visit the farmer's Market. I know we're going to be moving into the, you know, the pumpkin and the gourds and all yep. those types of, of things this season. So, farmers market is open outside at the community center um, Thursdays through October 20th, and then um, the hours. Uh, are for this month are still three to seven and then we shift from to three to six in October. Plenty of time still for some great outdoor entertainment with the nice weather sticking around. What's happening at Town Green? Yeah, we have a, a movie this uh, Friday, or I'm sorry, Friday, September 30th. I'm sorry. Let me say this. Again. All right. <laughs> the movies continue on Friday nights there through we go. September 30th. Got it. Okay. Um, this Friday, September 9th, um, they're going to be showing the movie Dear Evan Hansen. So you have yet another month to get yes. out and watch some movies at Town Green. Lots of chances to have fun. Another great event that is planned for September 16th and 17th mm. is Rock in the Grove, renamed yep. here, but yep. still some great fun. What's going on those two days? Yeah, so this is another great event brought forward by the Maple Grove Lions Club Foundation. So um, dates are Friday, September 16th. 16th and Saturday, September 17th. Friday night, uh, music is provided by the headliner Hairball with special guest Arena. And then Saturday Entertainment has three performers, Cole Allen, Anderson Daniels, and the headliner, um, the Devin Worley Band. So mm -hmm. we encourage folks to go out and check out uh, tickets on maplegrovelions.org. Yeah. You'll have the schedule and information about parking and all those types of yeah. things. Yeah, great September entertainment outside for you here in the city. Age-friendly community survey, something that is a new initiative or initiative that's going on right now.
who are you looking to participate? What type of information would be valuable for you? Yeah, so Age Friendly Maple Grove, a great organization yeah. of um, interested community partners that are looking at all the issues related to aging in Maple Grove or growing older in Maple Grove. So they are out with a survey um, hoping to learn what's important to residents as they think about growing older in Maple Grove. Um, that survey is available online at agefriendlymaplegrove.org or a paper copy can be picked up at the Maple Grove Community Center as well. Um, the survey is anonymous and confidential and it's open through the month of September. And then survey findings will be helped, uh, will be used to help Age Friendly Maple Grove develop an action plan that reflects um, some community priorities. So we yeah. encourage folks to get out and respond to that survey. Excellent. All right, let's hop ahead to October. A lot happening in October as well and it begins with a very special event, Maria's Voice event. Tell us again more about this family, all they're doing and this big event coming up. Yeah, so October is, you know, Domestic Violence Awareness Month and we mm -hmm. at the city have always been very um, active in this effort to bring awareness and education about domestic violence to the community um, in hopes of uh, getting rid of this issue for our community and its impact that it has on people's lives. Um, so on um, October 6th, Thursday, October 6th, there will be a community tribute uh, hosted by Maria's Voice and folks will recall that Maria Pugh was a young woman that was murdered by her husband here in Maple Grove um, back in 2020. Um, and so they have joined in on these efforts, um, the Purple Lights Initiative. Right. Um, we light up the town green purple, we light up um, the police department purple and encourage businesses to do the same mm. to really help bring awareness um, around domestic violence um, to the community. So again, that um, event at Community Tribute at uh, Town Green, uh, the program runs from 6 to 7, check-in starting at 5. There will be uh, music speakers and a candlelight vigil. Um, for more information about that, you can uh, go take a look at their website, mariasvoice.org. Very nice. All right, a couple other items to pass along to you. The first is a nice cooperative. We've talked about a few things happening with a number of area organizations. Yeah. Here's another example of that. Tell us what's happening with some school districts and other partners. Yeah, so this is Homework Starts with Home in Northwest, so it's focused up here in the Northwest Metro. Um, this is really for folks um, that are in the school districts that may be at risk of losing their housing. And so the school district has a program um, that uh, folks can be eligible for that offers resources and supportive services to families that might be experiencing um, housing instability. I think kind of the basis of this is that, you know, children's performance in school is really impacted by, you know, what's going on at home and is mm -hmm. there instability in, the, in folks' risk of losing their housing or maybe moving from couch to couch or family to family type of thing and and so I think the district is wanting to help connect folks with resources there um, to try to help improve that housing um, stability um, issue in the community. So the program is open to those that have a child attending um, in the Osseo District 279 or Brooklyn Center District 286 and you can contact the district directly for more information. Um, the program is supported by Osseo Area Schools, the Brooklyn Center Community Schools, Hennepin County and the YMCA. Very good. Last couple events for you here, another opportunity to put something on your calendar. October 3rd and October date, dates to remember 8th, dates to remember if you want to clean up the house before you close up the garage for right. winter, or you find what's in the basement, <laughs> how can you help out in Maple Grove? Yes, yeah, so we have our two cleanup events coming up um, October 3rd. This is curbside, okay. so we need to know ahead of time. You um, take a look at the website for Public Works or give a call to Public Works, and they can mm -hmm. get you on the schedule and know what it is that you're wanting us to pick up. And then October 8th is the drop-off day up at Public Works mm -hmm. um, that you can come and, and get rid of things that you're looking to move off your property so you can dispose of items such as appliances, propane tanks, and scrap metal and of course all the details about what we accept and if there's a charge associated with that are located there as well. Very good. All right, let's give you that website. We mentioned it many times during the show so this is the place to go if you want to find out more information about some of the things happening in the community. Right down at the bottom left of the screen, maplegrovemn.gov, you can find out more about the election, also about the drop-off day and some of the other events in town. Next council meeting, as you see in the middle of the screen, Monday, September 19th at 7.30 at the Government Center. For Heidi Nelson, I'm Dave Kaiser. Thanks for joining us on the City of Maple Grove Report.